Hi, I'm Michael Prettyman, one of your pastors here at Grace Works Church in Chattanooga, Tennessee. It's the second Sunday of the month, and for our church members and regular attenders with school-age children, this is a Parent Life Sunday. We try to do this on the second Sunday of the month with some exceptions as conflicts inevitably arise at times. The Grace Kid parents will be gathering after church for a little food and fellowship, and also the Grace Kids will be going to American House Assisted Living on Lee Highway this afternoon after church to give to the residents the puppy love baskets that they've made. Thank you again for your donations to this project. We're calling the month of February Love My Church Month and we're hoping to get around to some different church members and ask them what they love about Grace Works Church. Here's what one of our church members had to say. Okay, I'm here with Grace Works Church member Chad Hammond, and I'm asking him what he loves about Grace Works Church since it is Love Your Church Month. So, Chad? I love that everybody is so loving at our church and so happy to greet everyone that comes through and show as much love as they can. Cool. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. And maybe we'll get an opportunity to hear from some more of you throughout the month. Thank you again for joining us this morning, and I hope that you have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye. I'm here with Chad Hammond, and this is Love My Church Month at Grace Works Church. And Chad, I just want to know who your favorite pastor is at Grace Works Church. Well, don't put me on the spot like that, but uh, I'd say all three. Oh, okay. Thank you. I am. I, no, what, I no, am. What, where's that voice coming from? No, I, I am. am. I, uh, we are. We are, okay, okay. You're more we than we. <laughs> hey, welcome to Grace Works. If you're visiting with us, this is a wonderful church. We love the Lord and we love one another. And that's really what it's all about. When you love one another, you can serve together, work together, cry together. And you can count on people to surround you when times are tough. And also, you can share your joys when times are good. So, uh, But join us in worship today. Feel free to let the Holy Spirit lead you in your particular style of worship. This is the time for you to meet God. So you're not on the stage for us. You're not going to be judged by us. This is the time to celebrate God, His greatness, and His goodness. I want to tell you something wonderful that happened this week. And uh, it uh, really brought a, a lump to my, my throat. Uh, my wife passed uh, a little bit over 10 years ago. And I received a Valentine's card. And it says, you will always be the one I love. You're the one I want to have and to hold. You're the one I want to be with. And then when I open it, it says, Bill, for better or for worse, da, 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 da. And cherish the memories we created and shared love Darlene. Now, I don't know who was thoughtful enough to send that card, but I immediately stopped and thought that's exactly what Christ wants us to do. That we are to love others as Christ loved them while he was here on this earth. So perhaps we can take this as a model, an example, and we can reach out and do something wonderful for someone else and give Christ the honor and the glory. Father, as we begin worship now, we pray, Lord, that you will guide us, that we will honor you, that we will learn of you, that we will follow you. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to ask our Grace Kids if y'all will come on up to the stage here. And uh, come on up, guys. I'm going to get them right in between these speakers so I can get them on the screen as well. And uh, 
And uh, we have a, a guest with us this morning. I, as you, you guys know, you've heard me say it a lot, we uh, do a, a ministry at uh, East Brainerd Elementary School called Good News Club. And, uh-oh, we almost ran over somebody up here. Here we go. So, uh, and we brought, and Cece came with us. Cece from, and what, what's, what's I, I met her, Court. Rory, Cece and Rory. I just met Rory this morning, but that's Cece. But uh, Cece's always uh, helping us do the motions and everything. And uh, she heard we we're going to be up here this morning doing a song called God's Not Dead. So we have not done that at East Brainerd Elementary at Good News Club. So she's learned it on her own to help us do the motions. And uh, so uh, now I'm warning you, this song starts out with a bang and it just keeps going. So uh, get ready, you know, take your heart pill or whatever you need because it's called God's Not Dead. So roll that whenever you're ready. Here we go. Thank you, Grace Kids, and y'all staying up here with me, okay? Now, you know what I forgot to do? Jan Jan has recorded the kids in the room with us singing, and she said, we need to make sure we play that right after. I forgot to give that to you so you can see how wild they are in there. And then they shy up just a little bit in here. But uh, but you guys did a great job. Thank y'all for joining us this morning, and uh, we're glad that y'all are here with us this morning as well. Uh, whoa. So, uh, but... Uh, so uh, we're glad that y'all are here with us this morning as well. And I know that we have some guests who are out here with us this morning. And uh, we thank y'all for being here this morning. We have a Facebook Live audience watching us. You can go back and watch this on Facebook later on if you want. And uh, But uh, Facebook Live audience joining us this morning as well. So thank y'all for joining us. But I want you guys, the kids are going to lead us in our first song of worship this morning as well. But right now, I want you to go ahead and stand up. Y'all can come by the stage too and wave at the kids if you want. But get out there and find somebody and greet somebody this morning and tell them, welcome to Grace Works Church. We're going to sing here uh, some more songs in just a moment, but don't miss this opportunity to get out there and find somebody and welcome them to Grace Works Church. Hey, we're going to continue singing here. Songs about love. Valentine's Day is Wednesday, so put those hands together. 
This was called Love the Lord Your God, straight out of the scriptures, Mark 1230. And we're going to have some motions to go along with this. Just like this. Here's love. You ready? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Love the Lord. Here we go. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. With all your heart. With all your heart. With all your soul. With all your mind. With all your strength. Love the Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. All right, put those hands together. Now we're going to serve the Lord. Show me how to serve like this. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. I will serve. Here we go. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my Show me those muscles. And with all my strength. With all my heart. With all my heart. With all my soul. With all my mind. With all my strength. I will serve. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind. And with all my strength. Put those hands together. Here we go. to say, I will love you. Y'all repeat after me. I will love you. Say it. I will love. And I will praise. And I will praise you. Say it. I will praise. And I will serve. I will serve you. Yes. I will serve. And I will trust. I will trust you, Lord. With all my heart, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. Yeah. With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind. Muscles. Come on now. No? No muscles today? Hey now, what's the verse that goes along with that? You guys ready to help me out with this? Here we go. Mark 12 30. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. Mark 12 30. Thank you, Grace Kids. You guys can go on down here, and uh, we're going to continue singing here while these guys make their way down. Songs that I sang growing up in church, and I think most of you guys are going to know this, Oh, How I Love Jesus. You guys help me out with this this morning. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its words. Who died? 
continue with another love song this morning. Oh, how he loves you and me. Lift your voices and sing this with us. the Lord a clap offering. Yeah. Hey, thank y'all for singing it this morning. You can grab a seat. And uh, we had Pam front and center wearing her Valentine's Day red. It was done. We didn't even, we didn't even plan that. So, uh, you know, but uh, thank y'all for singing it with us this morning. And, uh, you know, uh, Valentine's Day being Wednesday, guys, just a quick reminder, <coughs> Valentine's Day is Wednesday. So make sure you get out there Tuesday night or Wednesday morning and get something. So, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, this is just something that I do I, on my, I don't know if this is a good idea or what, but I think it is very important that we talk to our Heavenly Father every day and we tell Him that we love Him. And I think I'm successful at that anyway. But I do have in my phone, you know, we have these calendars and all these notifications and all this stuff now these days. and on my phone every single day at 2.14 p.m., Valentine's Day being 2 slash 14, <laughs> 2.14 every day I have a reminder that pops up on my phone that says, and you know, we're in an, we live in an emoji world right now. Like, I have a thing that says, I, and it has a big red heart, love you, God. And it reminds me to stop and pray at 2.14 p.m. every day and just tell God simply that I love him. And, you know, sometimes I miss it because I'll be doing something and I'll go back and the notification will be sitting on my phone. But I try to always go back and look at that if I don't catch it right at the time and just tell God that I love him. Um, and as I was thinking about a scripture verse to read here during the scripture reading time, there are so many good scripture verses uh, to go through. Of course, there's the love chapter in 1 Corinthians. I think it's 1 Corinthians 13. Am I right? I don't know. 
fact check me, people. I just did a trivia on that. I should know. <laughs> but uh, but uh, anyway, go watch my trivia from last Monday. But uh, but uh, but there's the the love chapter in uh, in Corinthians, and then. Um, but I thought, you know, after the kids just sang that song, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. Mark 12. Jesus was talking with a bunch of, you know, religious people, maybe, you know, these guys that, you know, knew the Bible real well, knew the Jewish law really, really well. Of course, there wasn't a New Testament then, so it was the, it was the, the law, the Old Testament. And uh, one of the guys says in Mark 12, uh, 28, he said, one of the teachers of religious law was standing there listening to the debate because everybody was debating Jesus and uh, he said he realized that Jesus had answered well so he had he asked of all the commandments of all the commandments which one is the most important <coughs> Jesus replied and here we go with Mark 12:30 the most important commandment is listen O Israel the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. And Jesus didn't stop there. He said, the second is equally, equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. And I thought that would be an appropriate something to read this morning before um, Valentine's Day in our scripture reading time. And if we could just get that simple, I, I'm talking to myself by the way, that simple little concept of loving other people like we love ourselves. What a wonderful world we would live in. So right now, Let's just take an opportunity right now to talk to the Lord and thank him for something this morning. Maybe you can tell him that you love him. Maybe that's something you don't make a habit of doing every day. Maybe you do. But just take a moment right now to bow your heads and close your eyes. We're going to sing another love song, a love hymn here in just a moment. But don't miss this opportunity right now to talk to the Lord. is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bowed down in your care. God gave Contain the whole 
though stretched from sky to God, we thank you that we can come here this morning. And God, we just thank you for this beautiful gift of music that you've given us. God, we thank you for these beautiful instruments, these tones, these wonderful things that we are allowed to enjoy. And God, we know that you are the creator of all good things. And so God, as you allow us to enjoy this music, these instruments, these voices, these songs, these melodies, these harmonies, we return them back to you singing songs about your love for us and our love for you. God, I pray that you would be with Tony this morning as he brings the message. And God, what a privilege it is for me this morning to speak on behalf of every single person in this room and anyone watching online when I tell you, God, that we, we do, we love you. And we thank you for that gift of salvation that we have only through Jesus Christ. It's in Jesus' name we pray all of these things. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's, it's good to see you this morning. Um, I want to do an informal polling. I want to know, by show of hands, how many of you enjoy going shopping for new clothes? Raise your hand. Okay, okay. That's better than I thought. How many of you despise going shopping for new clothes? Are you watching this, Lana? I'm in that latter group. I do not like going shopping for new clothes. And I'm not really crazy about getting new clothes. And uh, matter of fact, I like my old clothes. I like them so much that I hang on to them as long as my family will allow. <laughs> now, I, I don't like to get rid of my old clothes. And I brought a clothing item that's very special to me. And... This is my lounging pants. <laughs> Don't worry, they're clean. <laughs> and if you can't tell, uh, there are little fish on here, trout. And it's, it's not a big deal about the trout. But you can also notice this was navy at one time. It's been well worn. I love my lounging pants. They're comfortable. And there's a certain thing when I put on these pants... I know I'm home. I'm at rest. I'm at peace when I'm wearing these. This is not a plea for you to buy me another pair of lounging pants. <laughs> I've got three additional pairs. But this particular pair is special to me. It's comfortable. I'm accustomed to wearing it. It feels good. And it has a certain impression on me that whenever I have these on I'm home if you have the privilege to come to my house knock on my door and open the door and I'm standing there and I'm wearing these you know I'm in a good mood <laughs> and you won't see me wearing these out in public like some people do I wear them when I'm home now I'm sure some of you afterwards will say get rid of those those look hideous but no I like those I don't want to get rid of those the Apostle Paul he speaks in the letter he wrote to the church to believers in the first century he used a figurative language about Christians getting rid of your old clothes and putting on new clothes 
Getting rid of the old clothes of your former life before Christ and putting on the new clothes, your new life. If you um, look in Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 11, that's where we're going to be reading. And I would encourage you to keep your copy of God's Word open uh, throughout because I'll make reference back to this. And um, here, I want you to notice how Paul continues to go back and forth, this idea of getting rid, putting off, taking off, depending on the translation you're considering. He's, he uses this imagery of taking off the old and putting on the new. Now, I don't want to get rid of this. And many of us, we don't want to get rid of our old clothes or our old lifestyle. But Paul is very adamant when he speaks here. He uses very strong words when he says in verse 5, he says, Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. In other words, get rid of. Take off that old earthly way, the old earthly life. And he says, "Take put to death these sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, covetousness which is idolatry and on account of these the wrath of God is coming in these you too once walked when you were living in them but now you must put them all the way anger wrath malice slander and obscene talk from your mouth do not lie to one another seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and you have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and is in all. Now, do you, do you see the language Paul's using? He, he, you're taking off, you're putting on. All of this, he's describing a distinction between the former life, the life before Christ, and now the life with Christ. He's addressing a group of people, a special group of people, Christians. He's not talking to the world. He's talking to Christians. So Grace Works, listen closely because he's speaking to us. Even though it was almost 2,000 years ago, it still applies today. His words are very relevant here. And notice how he starts off by saying, hey, before one puts on this new outfit, you've got to get rid of the old. You've got to get rid of maybe that which is comfortable, that which you feel good with. Get rid of it. And notice his language here. He says, put to death. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. Now, to start with, he's saying, I command you. This is a command put to death, therefore, whatever is earthly. Strong words he uses, and he, it's so strong here. He's, he's saying it takes effort. But put forth this effort to get rid of that which is the old way of life. It's a command. And it's also here, he shows the pain and the effort when he says, put to death. The strongest words he could use. Death. Strong. Violent. Kill it. Kill that old way of life. And kill that which is earthly. That which is to the, of the world. He's talking about a drastic change here. It's not something that's going to come simple, easy. He said, you're going to have to give it effort. He says, put to death. You ever heard the expression, you're dead to me? You ever use that expression? No, this ain't confession time. But when anyone says to another person, you are dead to me, what are they saying? Total separation. No more. Whether it's that significant other, whether it's a family member, you are dead to me. And that's what Paul is saying here in strongest, harshest of words. Put to death that old way, 
that old clothing and take on this new. Look with me what he says. He says, get rid of earthly behavior and get rid of this attitude that looks like the earth, looks like the world. In um, 1 John chapter 2, listen to these word, words that speak of our attitude, our reaction to the world and the earthly things. We looked at this last week. Notice these words. It says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride in possessions, this is not from the Father, but it's from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. That's the worldly things. That's the earthly things. That is the clothing that I love so much. And Paul says, get rid of it. Get rid of it. And look, here he makes a list. And I don't believe this to be an exhaustive list of attitudes and behaviors that you see in our world today as Paul saw almost 2,000 years ago. First he says, get rid of sexual immorality. And when he says sexual immorality, what's he talking about? He's talking about the idea anything outside of God's prescribed truth about sex. God created sex to be beautiful. We've made it something ugly, something disgusting. And God, when he created sex, it was to be enjoyed by a husband and wife. But yet in a world that we live in, we've made it ugly and we have abused it. And here, sexual immorality is anything outside of what is prescribed, whatever is mentioned here and defined in Scripture. Any sexual activity outside of marriage between the one man, the one woman, that is sexual immorality by definition of what the Greek word was in Paul's use in time. But he doesn't stop there. And depending on your translations, I'm using the English Standard Version. You're going to have different words used here. But he says sexual immorality. He says impurity. He says uh, passion, evil desire. And notice sexual immorality is a big general term. And it's speaking about the external activity. But he doesn't stop there. He says... It's just not about the activity of sex. It's also about the thought, the internal. When he talks about Im impurity, he talks about passion. He's talking about our thought life in relation to sex. He says, get rid of it. This is not who you are. And if you're comfortable in this, and you don't want to get rid of it, John says, don't love the world. How can the love of the Father be in you? He puts us in a predicament, doesn't he? For us to want to live like the world and claim Christ. But he goes on. He says, notice how he says, he gives all these terms describing sex. And he says, and covetousness. Why in the world would he use greed and covetousness? Well, they have some commonality in it. For greed is when we believe that everything, everyone exists for our pleasure, for our purpose, for our entertainment. Greed, materialism. That's when you look at these material things and you say, this is for me, for my enjoyment. In all of life, greed, everything, everyone exists for me. So you see the, the, the commonality in sex, greed? Paul describes it as idolatry. We're worshiping self and what self wants. Paul says, uh-uh. With all the effort you can muster up, get rid of it. You're God's child, get rid of it. 
Our tendency is often to focus on sexual sins because that may not be us, the external, but we hold on to the internal. We may overlook and uh, not include materialism, one of America's favorite sins. But notice Paul doesn't stop there. Our tendency is to focus on those first two, but he goes on to say, look, in in, um, verse 6, he says, this wrath is coming, and in these two you once walked. Verse 8, you must put these away. Anger. My translation says wrath. Another says rage. He's pointing out our emotions. He's pointing out those emotions that we can abuse others. There's nothing wrong with getting upset. But when our up, being upset and anger begins to abuse other people we're thinking about self and only self here Paul says get rid of that and then if you continue on he says he speaks about the uh, behavior that we want harm to others malice slander and obscene talk he's talking about touching on our speech notice how he's taking our speech our emotions and categorizing them putting them in there with greed and sexual misconduct. Paul says, get rid of it. Put it to death. And then finally, look down at uh, verse 11. He go, Paul goes into giving these different people groups distinctions when he says, he says, there's not Greek and Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised. He goes on listing all these different people groups. He said, you're all equal. And one thing Paul would say was, that that clothing you need to get rid of also includes spiritual pride. Pride in who you are. Who you are as a Christian. And condemning and looking down on others. And using such categories as racial discrimination. Using religious discrimination. Here, the, Paul was dealing with Jews and Gentiles. He said, no, it's not either or. It's us. He speaks about, to, he addresses the group as cultural, socioeconomic, when he speaks about the slave and the free person. And he says, get rid of the spiritual pride. Take that off. Get rid of it. And put on the clothing that looks like Christ. How many of you are familiar with uh, the Geek Squad? You seen those uh, cars that are black and white, have a little orange logo on the side? The Geek Squad is a company that is there to help you. When you have trouble with your phone, your computer, uh, your gaming device, your TV, you call the Geek Squad. A geek is someone who is Somewhat of an expert in technology. And their whole motto is, you call us, we fix your problem, then we leave you behind. I wonder if sometimes we don't treat God that way. We don't call on Jesus the same way. Okay, God. I need you right now. Would you fix this problem? Would you restore this relationship? God, would you bless me? And God does a work. And then we go, okay, just leave me alone. Don't impact the way I live my life. For us to call on God and ask him to respond and then say, okay, leave me alone. Don't mess with my lifestyle. Don't mess with how I present myself. Is he truly Lord of our life? I want you to save me, but don't get mess in the old clothes I like to wear. When we look at these different uh, attributes, attitudes, and behaviors, when we fail to adopt what we see here in Scripture as part of our life, when we fail to abide by these scriptural views of these that we are found in this list ultimately we're saying I refuse to make you Lord 
I refuse to submit to you. I'm going to hold on to these old lounging pants. He doesn't want part of us. He wants all of us. Paul uses very, very strong words. And he hits all of us. He says, get rid of the old clothes. So, I decide I'm going to get rid of these old clothes. So what look am I going for? What am I shooting for? What is the fashion statement I'm trying to make? Look at verse 10. Here you hear, you see this imagery where he says, and put on the new self, put on the new clothes, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. And the clothes, the look you're shooting for, that we should be shooting for, is that we would look like Jesus. I want to look like Jesus. I want to bear his image. When other people see me, they see Jesus. This is what he looks like. That is a heavy, heavy responsibility. Colossians chapter 1 and 2, we looked at a couple weeks ago. And in Paul's writing, he he spends quite a bit of time talking about the different truths about who, who Jesus is. When he says he is the image of the invisible, the firstborn of all creation. He gives you all this doctrine, this theology. He talks about who Jesus is. And then he says, he's the one that's reconciled you. He talks about what he's done for us. And then, this letter that he wrote to the church, it it changes with chapter 3. Because then he begins to say, okay, this is who he is, what he's done. And this is what you're going to have to do. This is the appearance that you're shooting for. This is how you're going to live your life. You heard the expression, dress the part? Well, we claim Christ, we claim to be Christians. Paul would say, okay, dress the part, live it. Live as Christ. At Grace Works, I use two words to describe when, uh, what it means to look like Christ. To be making disciples. That's the reason we exist as a church. We're to be making disciples, not making church members, not filling seats, not having events. The ultimate purpose for the church is to make disciples. And a disciple is one who is growing, maturing in their faith in God. So what does that look like? Two words I constantly refer back to. Two words that begin with the letter I. Someone who is maturing as a Christian is one who's growing in intimacy with Christ. We're growing close to Him. That's what maturity as a disciple, a follower of Jesus looks like. But the other is image. Intimacy and image. Someone who's growing in their faith is growing in what they look like in Christ. Paul says here, put on these new clothes, look like him. Look like his image. The word Christian is found in the book of Acts When they first started calling people Christians, the word itself meant little Christ. Little Jesus. Is that what we look like? Is that the image we're putting before the world, before each other? Have you heard the expression, image is everything? Christians? image is the only thing the image of Jesus is the only thing we should be shooting for look like him and the the more we Christians know of Jesus as we see him in his word the more we Christians interact with him the more we're being changed to be like him 
How can I look like Jesus if, if I don't know his word? How can I look like Jesus if I never talk to him? The more I spend reading, maybe not understanding all of it, the more I spend telling him, like Michael said, I love you, thank you, the more he begins to renew and change me to look like himself. And the more we take these old clothes, they put off those old clothes, the greater the freedom we experience as he takes us and makes us look more like him. Paul gives these commands and he's, last week we focused on the first part of chapter 3 where he says, set your minds on things above, set, seek the things of above. Those were commands. And then he says, put to death. Next week we're going to talk about what you're going to put on, part two, time for some new clothes. But what is the appeal to change clothes? Why should I get rid of the old? Well, look back at verse 11, where he lists all these different people groups, all these comparisons, but he finishes by saying, Christ is all and in all. Christ is all that all of these people need, and he is in all. And so, is you consider why to get rid of and take on, keep in mind that you, as a Christian, you've been given a new life, a new relationship. And when he says here that Christ is all, he says he is all that you need. You don't need the things of this world. You don't need the earthly lifestyle. You don't need to practice this behavior. There's a interesting formula as a former math teacher that I, I loved. It says Christ plus something equals nothing. If we add anything else on to our purpose in life and salvation, then we're totally missing it. But the equation also is given Christ plus nothing equals nothing everything when we come to a saving knowledge of jesus christ that's all we need and that was what paul was struggling with in writing to the church at uh, Colossae when he said you don't need all this other stuff all you need is jesus and he concludes this passage we read by saying christ is all christ is supreme and that's the reason we should take on new clothes that's the reason we should get rid of the old but one last thing you don't only have a new life a savior jesus but you have new relationships you have new relationships paul points out that all these different people they look different they come from different backgrounds he says christ the same jesus is in each one of them who claims to be a Christian. You have new relationships. Several years ago, we took a family vacation to the beach. We're beach lovers. And when I say beach lovers, we may go out to eat, but the big thing we do is go to the beach and sit all day and bake. And uh, on one particular year, we went, and Lana and I and the three daughters all went and for whatever reason, I walked down to the beach. I had on my bathing suit and a T-shirt, one of my favorite T-shirts. And uh, took my T-shirt off, had a good time, went back. Next day, guess what? Walked down to the beach, wore the same T-shirt. Girls notice, Dad, you got to get rid of the shirt. I'm like, why? What's wrong with it? Third day, guess what I wore to the beach? Bathing suit and same T-shirt. There's nothing wrong with this T-shirt. It's clean. I wore it for a few minutes, took it off, and went and jumped into the ocean. Next day, guess what I wore to the beach? You got it. I wore my bathing suit and my same old T-shirt. Now I've stuck my heels in and said, 
I will wear this shirt. Now, keep in mind, this shirt is not just any t-shirt. It's one of my favorites, but it's a really nice t-shirt. It's got the, a brand name across the front. It has no holes. You can't tell it's worn. And it's clean. What is the problem? You know what I wore the fifth day? Same thing. <laughs> now, why did my family have a hard time with that? Was it because it was dirty? No. Because it looked bad? No. My teenage daughters hate it because it embarrassed them. Dad, get rid of the shirt. You see, for them, we had a good time with it, and somehow that shirt disappeared. <laughs> but for them, they were embarrassed because it was a reflection upon them. It's the same old shirt. Church, when we become united with Christ, we identify with Christ as Christians, we join a much larger group of people called the church. And what I'm wearing is a reflection upon you. Whenever you come to this place and you say, I want to be a part of the GraceWorks family, you're not joining a country club. You're joining and committing yourself to be a part of this family. And so we say we have a personal relationship with Jesus. Yes, we do. It's an individual relationship but it's also a corporate relationship because we've been joined together. And so when I take on the earthly and I hold on to the old clothes, it impacts the body. It impacts the church. And I'm not going for dress code here, but Paul gives us something to consider and think about in our attitudes and our behavior. And so when I hold on to that old life, those old clothes, it can disrupt the unity, the harmony of the body of Christ. It can cause damage within. When we hold on to the sins of the former life and unwilling to get rid of, all of a sudden, it impacts our relationships with one another. If you go back and look at the, the relationships, or not the relationships, the listing here that Paul mentioned in the first verse we, we read, think back to how that impacts the life of the body. It can pull us apart, can it? We have a purpose, that's to make disciples, to look like Jesus, to grow close to him. Are we willing to get rid of the old clothes? You have to come back next week to find out the new clothes you're going to put on. But we all want to look like him. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, thank you so much for your word. And thank you more importantly for Jesus, your son, our savior. Father, uh, I pray as we consider your words, we consider the earthly lifestyle, the things that we're comfortable with. Father, help us to let go. Help us to look more like you. And Father, I pray that you would draw us to yourself and continue to renew us. So that not only those in the church see Jesus, but the world sees Jesus. A true, accurate picture of who Jesus is. Well, Father, I thank you for your church at Grace Works. I thank you for the love within. I thank you for the love for you. And Father, I pray that you continue to, to clothe us with your love. Father, I pray this time we would hear your voice. May we respond. Heavenly Father, we love you. And we pray this in your son's name. Like I said, 
says here, why should you want to change clothes? Well, a new life. Do you have that new life in Christ? Maybe you don't. And maybe this is your time to respond. Maybe your time just to say, yes, I live, I love the world, but I want to know the love of Jesus. It may be that you're here today and you say, hey, I know that I'm saved and I know that I need to be a part of the church, but I want to experience those, that new relationship. I understand the fact that it's not joining, it's committing to a group of people. Whatever God has laid on your heart as we've read his words, however you need to respond, however the Spirit leads you, may do so at this time. I'll be here. Members of our prayer ministry team will be here to pray with you if you'd like. But please use this time to respond to the Father. Will you stand with me and sing this with me? Father, we love you. Father, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Glory not getting rid of my lounging pants I hope I'm getting rid of some of my old clothes from my old life I don't have it all figured out church I don't expect any of you to have it all figured out but I pray that you'd turn to the father and he would point out the clothing that you need to get rid of the old life I pray for you this week that you would go to the father and talk to him spend time tell him you love him Spend time telling him thank you for your blessings. And make sure you tell him thank you for the blessing of his church at Grace Works. I pray God's blessings on you this week. One announcement, one clarification I've got. Um, I know last week Brother Bill pointed out that the date on the churchwide dinner is March the 3rd. And then this week I put in the newsletter, it's the fourth. <laughs> no, just don't listen to numbers. Just remember it's the first Sunday in March at five o'clock. And the whole purpose is not to feed me. It's to take this opportunity to invite a friend, family member that's not connected to a church and introduce them to Grace Works. Be praying, be reaching out to those around you, encouraging them to come and join us for that special evening, 5 o'clock. There's sign-up sheets in the foyer. Marianne Holland will be back there. We need soups, chilies, desserts, and anything else. You see uh, Marianne, she'll be in the foyer. Now, uh, I believe our children's ministry, our Grace yeah. Kids, are they in the foyer? They're, they're in the foyer, yeah. Okay. They've, they've got a little something to give away, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, share some love, uh, things they've done. So, uh, you speak to our kids on your way out and uh, receive a gift from them. 
May God bless you this week. And let me tell you real quick, the, the Mary told me that um, people have been signing up for the, the, thank you for signing up. She said, we're a little bit dessert heavy right now. And so if you want to sign up and you haven't signed up yet, if you keep signing up for desserts, we're going to have to sign up for like, uh, what is it, insulin? I don't know. But so we, but, but so, well, so we may need people to sign up for uh, uh, more soups and chilies. If you're thinking, what am I going to, super chili probably is what you want to go for. Um, I want to make a quick announcement here. Um, we had uh, Janet Watkins' brother passed away yesterday. Uh, yesterday afternoon, his name was James Broner. He lives in Michigan. Uh, right now, we don't know the uh, funeral arrangements. Uh, it just happened very, like I say, just yesterday afternoon. So be in prayer for Janet and Kent Watkins and the family as uh, they'll be preparing uh, for that um, funeral service. But James Broner was his name. And, uh, of course, I think it's going to be up in Michigan. So just remember them in your prayers. And... Um, I, the, we smell grilling going out there. The grill gang's getting going for the parent life thing. So, uh, But uh, thank you all for being here this morning. Last announcement, the offering boxes are in the back. So uh, if you brought your offering this morning, as you're going out the door this morning, please drop your offering there, and we'll sing out with a song here. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. Earth and it sounds like music. In my ear, it's the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus! Oh, how I love Jesus! Oh, how I love Jesus! Because He first loved me. 